Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So, what do you do at Endgame? Well, it was pretty expansive and there's definitely a feeling of what's next that kind of comes over many people once they hit max level, especially if they're a bit new. So, today I'm going to lay out what your next steps are after you hit level cap in Battle for Azeroth, as well as a few things that I think are just worth checking out that are kind of fun. Okay, first up, do the war campaign. This is like the first thing you should be doing. This will give you access to the other faction zones and all of their world quests that'll be found in those zones, which is very good. It will also end up getting you five followers for your mission board, which itself is a good source of various resources, including artifact power, and uh, it'll be needed for progress on Pathfinder Part 1 as well, so it's definitely worth doing. Now, doing the war campaign will also unlock the mythic-only dungeon for your faction, and it also starts getting you access to the war campaign upgrades, which themselves um, have various requirements for each tier. There's quite a lot of content here, and your life in BFA will be easier once it's done. Next, get Pathfinder. So that's the next thing that I'd recommend doing. You'll want to do the war campaign, um, of course, for this, which I've already covered. You'll also want to do the zone storylines for all of your faction zones, and you'll also want to hit Revered for every reputation, and then finally explore every zone, which basically just means fully uncover the fog of war for um, every zone's world map. Oh, and also 100 world quests. Overall, might not be that hard, but it might take a while, so I'd recommend getting uh, getting started now. Next, clearing out zone quests. So you might be level 120 and you might think, oh, there's no reason in going, you know, back to do side quests and that don't really count towards Pathfinder. That's mostly true, but they still give you reputation, quite a lot of it actually, and that's especially important when you remember how world quests are pretty slow at doling out the rep. Over the next while, I'm going to be clearing out all of the zones completely for that, um, basically, the burst of reputation, ideally so I can stack myself some of the 335 revered rep gear sooner rather than later. Next up, gearing. So World of Warcraft is a gear-driven MMO. I would recommend putting work into gearing your character, and I've already done a full video on this topic, so it's best to check that out in the description. And also, on a similar uh, note, artifact power, you should start pumping up your Heart of Azeroth. And again, there's a full video for this already on the channel, and there's no point in repeating it all here, so it will be linked down below. Next, crafting. I think you should get started with a crafting profession. Now, look, you can make a lot of money from gathering right now, so that's definitely something that you could be doing, but if you want to get gear, then, uh, well, crafting is a good thing to do because you can get two 355 bits of crafted gear for, um, you know, each armor type, so like blacksmithing, leatherworking, and tailoring. They're BOP, so only crafters have access to them, and you could also craft on a scribe the Dark Moon deck. That could be a lot of money, actually, that you could make, because it is BOE, and I'm sure the Raiders will be paying top gold for it uh, once the fair comes around. Now, these all require 110 out of 150 BFA crafting skill, and past that, it's just a matter, of course, of crafting the recipe. Now, crafting it will unlock the next version of the item, which will be 370, and crafting that will unlock the 385 version, but both of those will require resources from Old Deer. Next, activate a contract. This is something you could easily miss. There are new um, items called contracts that are made by scribes. They will cause you to gain 10 rep with the selected faction whenever you complete any world quests and they are active until you use another contract. Basically, it's free rep for content that you're already doing, so you should absolutely activate one of these. I'm personally going to be going with Champions of Azeroth because of the um, Heart of Azeroth item level upgrades and the 355 Azerite gear once you hit Exalted. And next, money making. This is probably one of the most time efficient uh, periods of the expansion to make gold. Like even just running around picking herbs and mining things will get you a shed load of cash. If you're a crafter, I would recommend checking out Lazy Gold Maker's spreadsheet. Uh, the Legion one that he did was amazing, so yeah, the, the BFA one I'm sure it's going to be as well. Then of course, mining and herbalism will be really lucrative right now, like stupid money for the work in comparison to other times, and there'll probably be a herb price spike once Old Deer opens up, because the Raiders will want all their alchemy stuff. Now the WoW Economy subreddit is also a fantastic resource for aspiring gold makers and gumdrops also runs a great gold making column on wowhead and also it's just a decent time to flog anything off that you get from the scrapper if you want to go just full lazy mode and not bother uh, you know crafting or anything all those mats will still be worth quite a bit now okay next up learning new gameplay safely so there really is no better time to do this than now so first the content is new for everyone, so generally the allowances for mistakes and learning will be a bit higher from the community. Now, the content's also not that hard. Um, after all, Mythic Plus and Raids won't be out for a few weeks. So what this means is you can learn the new dungeon layouts and mechanics at the same time that you're learning a new role. So this is a great time if you're an aspiring tank or healer, plus the instant cues for being a tank or healer will be absolutely wonderful. Next, hunting for a guild. Uh, world of Warcraft is so much better if you're in a guild. I mean, 
the game basically isn't even that good if you're not playing it socially, like, once you get to the higher end stuff. Um, it's really, like, the social stuff, it is the strength of this game, so find a guild. Now, this is the second best time to do it. The best time probably was during pre-patch, but there still will be plenty of guilds who are looking for new members, so I would recommend uh, looking into that. And also, in a similar note, communities. So they're a new social feature in BFA, and they're similar to guilds in that they're a large group of people, but they're different to guilds in that you can join many of them. They're great for loose interest groups, or say, a YouTube channel's community. Guess what? I've got one of those. So, if you'd like to say the EU Alliance and Horde communities will be linked below, so uh, yeah, you can hang out in those. Next, get all the flight points. Uh, it might not be fun, but just, you know, trek across all the continents. Um, unlocking every flight path and exploring every zone might be a bit boring, but it will be really handy later on. We're going to be using the flight paths on the two continents for the next 8-12 to 12 months, so it's definitely worth doing. Okay, next, let's just talk about some general things that don't really fall in the usual endgame sort of progression category. So, first up, attempting to solo Legion content. I think it's one of the more fun things to do in the game, especially when you're soloing an old raid that's barely soloable. We're in that situation now with the early Legion raids where they're not really a face roll, but they are becoming killable by more and more players. Uh, typically, I give this a shot every time I get a new bunch of gear, and it's just quite fun in general. It's also great for transmog. And I especially remember like doing HFC Mythic, uh, soloing that when it was kind of tricky, especially bosses like Tyrant Valari. So that could be pretty fun. Next, the Najatar mount. So this is a bit of a break from the regular content here, that this is a secret mount. So the Nazatar Blood Serpent is a BFA secret that was dug up during the expansion's beta. Now, you'll need 20 Abyssal Fragments. These are world drops from the old god-related priest-like mobs. Um, so you can farm these up or you can buy them on the AH. Now, they're probably a pretty good gold farm right now, but anyway, once you've got 20 of them, you um, go to the coordinates on screen in Stormsong Valley, you go behind the waterfall and you use them at the altar. Now, crafting that will kind of hurt you and it will also give you an item. Now, you want to take the item that it gives you and take them to these coordinates and you can use it to summon in a rare. Now, that rare will take a few people to kill and only the summoner will get them out, but that's how you get the Nazatar Bloodworm. Next, leveling up with the other factions. So, I think this is definitely worth doing. Uh, the dual narrative is very, very different, and so is the zone design. It's actually kind of crazy how different the, like, the continents are. Um, I'm definitely going to be starting an alliance uh, leveling run probably over the weekend, and... At least I know that I prefer the design of their zones, especially with how they managed to create this like massive place that feels kind of realistic and lived in. Um, so between the zone story and the war campaign, there's a lot of faction specific content to check out and I'd recommend that you do that. Next, let's talk about mog hunting. So there's actually plenty to be doing here on the transmog front, even now when most of the content isn't open. So this expansion's got dead cool questing and um, dungeon gear, both of which you can start collecting now. So each armor type has a Kultras and a Zandalar equivalent for questing and dungeons as well as different color tints for them. Now, um, then on top of that, you can also maybe start working on your Marks of Honor so that you could eventually buy the PvP Transmog Ensembles. Plus also the initial crafted PvP themed armor is available from the crafters, so you can get that for all your armor types. I'm pretty happy with um, what's here actually, and I really want to get loads of the Zandalari quest set. Um, I want to get their dungeon plate set, and I'm trying to get as well the Kulteran dungeon plate and leather sets, especially the leather, because you look like a goddamn pirate. So. There we go, that is broad stuff that you can start doing once you hit level 120. I try to put in a mix of things that are just fun little side activities that you can go and do, like the Blood Serpent or the Mog Farming, and then also just the best practice steps for establishing your character in the end game of Battle for Azeroth. So thank you very much for watching this video, and a big thank you to everyone over on Patreon. Now over on Patreon, you can get the monthly art cards. They are awesome. We're about to get the Kulturas ones um, shipped. We just had an absolutely insane last two weeks and a few little issues. Um, so yeah, we're about to get that done. And uh, the new art has came in for August and it is so damn cool. So you can check that out too. And there's a bunch of other stuff over on the Patreon that you can check out. So thank you to them. Thank you to you for watching this video and I will see you next time.